Hey everybody, Aaron here from Countryside Acres Homestead. Uh, just want to thank you all for supporting our channel and for watching us. If you're new to the channel, uh, I'd like you to or ask you to subscribe and, and uh, hit that notification bell and uh, just take a look around. We've got lots of different videos and a variety of different topics on our page. So take a look around, spend some time there. And uh, if you enjoy, then please share. Uh, with others and consider subscribing today. Uh, I've been asked lots on how we heat this place and um, Thought we would show you uh, How how we heat our place here with coal? Um, show you the stove Puppies in the barn? Puppies, puppies, everywhere's puppies, hey? <laughs> gonna play with them? If you can get in there, there you go. Okay, so this is our coal stove. It's a portage in Maine uh, coal stove. And it's self-feeding. We got coal in this bin back here. There's 40 ton of coal in there. We get that delivered uh, with a big semi. And just auger it up into the top. Um, very happy with the way that heats. It's very affordable as well. Costs us about a hundred a ton, or sorry, about ten dollars a ton um, to uh, like for the coal delivered. So that's not bad at all. Last year we burned about thirty tons, so it's three grand to um, to heat our house. Um, so we're heat, heating the house over there, which is uh, twelve hundred square feet plus the basement. The garage is about a thousand square feet. And then we have the shop here is, uh, I think here, 2,400 square feet. And then there's an apartment on the back or an office. Um, we have it set up as an apartment right now or a guest house. It's another, oh, I've got to think 600 square feet. So quite a bit of square footage here. This guy has no problem keeping up at all. Uh, works, works really well. It augers itself in through the back. And the coals in this bin. We built this box around here because we were having some trouble when the temperature goes up and down. It's done that a lot this year. It's been kind of moving around on us, and um, it uh, causes us a bit of condensation in the in there, and freezes up when it gets cold again. So on a warmer day, it seems to, for whatever reason, it warms up enough that it gets wet in there, and then when it gets cold, it freezes up. So I tried building this around here to help that a little bit. I have been told that if I cut a um, a groove in here to let some of the heat escape. It could be back feeding from the stove itself, some of that heat and going up in the tube and then going up in the tube or up into the bin here. And this would just act like a giant chimney. So if I cut a, a slot in here and let some of that heat escape, one guy told me that might be something to, to try out. And yeah, I haven't got around to that but definitely looking into it. So here's a coal just in the bin. And you can see here even some of these pieces are froze together right now. Like that piece and that piece, those are stuck, they're frozen. So when it warms up, that kind of lets go and it has a tendency to freeze up in a big block. Um, but yeah, not everybody has that issue. Another guy I talked to, he feeds from his 40 ton bin into a small bin. And he feeds from his 40 ton bin into a small bin. He does that once a week. And so the small bin just holds enough for a week and then he never has any issues with it freezing up when he's using it. Um, because he frees it up from the when it's coming out of the big bin. So that would be another option as well. We moved it over here when we built the barn this year. It used to sit on the other side of the barn. And um, yeah, maybe next year we could consider putting something in between here. Um, yeah, who knows? But it works. So it pumps it. We just got the pump here, like it heats the water in here. It's burning the coal, heats the water. Uh, all thermostatically controlled and then these pumps deliver one brings it the circuit to the house and to the garage and the other one brings it to the shop um, I had hooked up here as well a an outdoor wood stove which I got sitting in the yard here now I'll zoom in on that 
I had that sitting here and I because we have quite a bit of bush here I wanted to run both systems but that particular unit there is way too small it's undersized for here I couldn't feed the wood to it fast enough to keep up heat in the place so that's why I got my lines way out here now though because they used to come up underneath in the wood stove hooked up in there and then from the wood stove it was connected here to the coal stove and I've taken that out um, so yeah once the weather warms up I could dig um, I mean, it comes from here on an angle to the shop and I could just open it up here and dig it straight across. I don't really like how it's laying here across the yard. I tried to insulate it a little bit, but uh, I'm sure it's still a lot of heat loss going on in there. So anyway, fan in the back blows in. Uh, whenever it requires heat, when the thermostat's telling it to kick on, this auger starts, feeds in, and that right away also turns this guy, which is the ash relief, uh, removal. There's another auger in the bottom, I'll show you from the inside, and it releases or removes the ashes from the bottom of the stove, dumps them out on the pile out here, and brings coal in through the top onto the stoker plate, and then this fan here blows in there to, um, to make, it, make it burn. So here's the ashes, it just comes out here, and self dumps outside. Um, all we got to do is take the tractor bucket and shovel this up. So I mean for a while we just kind of dump it onto a pile here and every now and again I bring the tractor up, shovel it in and, and dump it. Inside, you can see in there, yeah. So this whole plate turns around. This, as it's feeding coal in, this guy spins around and he'll push these little tabs across. And that makes this whole plate turn around in circles and spreads the coal out evenly all around and the fan actually blows up through the center the same place as the coal and I mean that gets cooking hot I wouldn't even be able to stand here this close uh, when I got the door open it's so hot very efficient heating I really really like it I'd never actually heard of a coal stove prior to this um, yeah the only disadvantage I guess I, I would would nice like, it would be nice to burn wood here as well having the bush that we have and I thought about building a grate that I could lay in here around this and then I can still throw logs in but um, never never have done that yet we looked into it briefly somebody told me it has to be very very thick metal in order to uh, take the heat from the coal so just haven't haven't got that far up in the top it's probably filthy this needs to be cleaned out once in a while so the smoke goes up up the back here up through that side and if you can see there's a baffle in the middle there you go there's the baffle, but it comes up through this side and then around the other side and there's water all around that as well yet. So as the exhaust is leaving, it is heating up uh, water as well, which I find to be very efficient. And then, uh, then it goes up to two. There's another clean out on the back on that side and then the one on this side. And uh, apparently I need to clean that out again. I like to clean it at least once a week, get it all out. You get a lot of this fly ash just kind of builds up in here and, uh, and down in here. So, and then over here is the controls for it all. I'm not going to begin to pretend I know what half of this stuff in here is, but it's quite the control box. I do know I had trouble with this guy. I thought it had quit, and uh, it just doesn't like the cold. When it's really, really cold and you leave the door open too long, he don't work anymore. So I ended up driving an hour and a half to uh, Prince Albert to go pick up a new one of these because they told me it was broke. Uh, if it's doing what I said it was doing, then it must be busted, so I went and picked up a new one. They're not cheap. I don't remember the price now offhand, but um, I picked up a new one and brought it here, and I forget what it was doing. It was doing something funny too, so I put the old one in again, and, and it worked. And I thought, well, that's bizarre. So I ended up, at least they let me return the other one, which worked out good. And I added a bunch of different parts and different settings. Here I can change the settings. This is actually the exact same as my milk cooler was when we had the dairy farm. So I can change the temperature on that to whatever I want. I'll just do that for interest sake right now so it kicks on. So this is turning now. It'll be dropping some ashes out. Maybe you can see them falling here. There you go. And now this is blowing. And it's kicking up a, a fire here. So we'll wait for that to really get good and hot. It all takes time. You can see it's getting a little warmer. And so that coal is just feeding in, like I said, from the from the bin back here. And it feeds it in. Maybe we'll see it moving a little bit sometimes. 
Uh, lay low. But it's grabbing it from there, going up through this tube, and in. You can hear that fan running now, blowing in there. You're getting a pretty good sized flame. It never goes out, even if um, if I don't need hot water, like if the water stays warm enough, it still kicks on every now and again. I, I don't know what the timing is on that. Every so many minutes, it will turn on, and uh, that it just feeds itself a little bit more cold and gives a little air to keep that fire going so that it doesn't ever run out. So that's already extremely warm. I'm, uh, I don't know, my hand's about 16 inches away from, from the opening, and that's already very, very warm. And it's kind of just kicking up here now. You can see all that fly ash in there, all the little sparkies. Always enjoy, enjoyed fires. It's kind of like a campfire. It's just mesmerizing to watch and look at that burning in there. You got Waylon kicking up a pile of dust. He's working hard. Cleaning up the dust. Or the ash is making dust. the boys job they do chores in the morning and clean up here make sure the stove's going anyway a good flame you can see the one side here is not going it will eventually burn on all sides it's just burning on the three right now there's a bunch of ash here that's going to knock off and you can see how it turns around and that's also how the ash falls off so as the coal comes up the center this guy spins around and the ashes knock off the sides and they fall down in the holes oh that's too warm over there they fall down in there, and then that auger, let me get it, there you go, that auger pulls all the ashes out. Very slick system. Now I had no idea how much these things cost. I uh, did find out when I was looking into getting rid of it and putting the wood in, the guy's like, well, you're crazy, why would you do that? This is more efficient than wood will ever be. Um, and these are, well, they're up in the $20,000 range for a new stove like this. That doesn't include the bin, that's just the stove. So, very expensive unit, but apparently lasts a long time. I've heard a lot of good things about them. Uh, coal is something we have lots of here in the West, so it's not like you're going to run out of that anytime soon. And, uh, and it burns hot, really hot. In many parts of the prairies, trees is something we don't have anything of here. Now I'm about 20 inches away and it's, it's almost too hot for my hands to hold that, that there. So gives you a pretty good idea how that works. And I'll show you the chimney. So you can see, you can see inside here how hot that's burning, right? All the flames. I mean, there, there's lots of fire there. And I look at that chimney, there's no smoke. On a very cold day, you'll see steam coming out of there. But uh, very rarely do you ever see smoke. And that's because it's burning so efficiently. I am trying to see if we can find some, but I don't see anything coming out of there. Now, obviously, you can see that there is... Uh, where's my finger? There we go. You can see that there is some discoloring here and also in the bin. So there is obviously something coming out, but, but not very much. When I had that wood stove going, whoa, can you see it? There it is. I mean, it was just constantly puffing smoke. And uh, yeah, just fill the whole yard here. If you got a cold day, that, that smoke coming out is hot and it just comes back down and settles around the yard and that doesn't travel up. My last place, we had a chimney way taller than that. And I had the outdoor wood stove inside my shop, uh, but still smoking like crazy. And that's all unburnt fuel going up into the atmosphere, whereas here, you don't have any of that. She's crystal clean coming out of there. I mean, I wouldn't stick my face in it and breathe it or nothing, but you're not... It's very efficient. That's what I'm getting at. Burns very, very efficiently. Anyway, hope you enjoy that. That's, uh... Still working? Gavin her. Hope you enjoy that. Hope that explains a little bit. If there's uh, something there you'd like to see more of the stove. I think I kind of covered it all. Uh, but whatever, if there's something else that you would like to see uh, in the house, I guess this is hooked up to a radiator in a furnace. So just a regular furnace with a rad in it, and then the air blows through there. In the shop, you got in-floor heat. I did throw a rad in there now, just when I'm working, I can get heat faster because it takes longer with the in-floor heat to heat the whole building up. The apartment uh, has got radiators in it, and the shop has a rad in the wall 
with a fan behind it. That's or the shop up the garage. Sorry, has a rad with a fan behind it to keep it warm. Um, but that's about it. So anyway, any other questions? Feel free to drop them down below. Um, I don't mind answering anything. We get lots of different questions. A lot of them just come through Facebook, uh, and some of you also text me questions. But um, yeah, we, we, we love the feedback. We love hearing from you. So drop whatever questions you have. We've got some really cool videos coming up and some big, big plans. And uh, we'll be talking about that, that more in the next few videos. Um, yeah, just some big changes. Looking forward to spring. Big things happening. So thanks again for watching our channel. And uh, yeah, if you haven't already, please subscribe and share. So, Talk to you later.